Joining me now, former Trump campaign spokeswoman and senior advisor to the Trump transition team, Katrina Pearson. Katrina, thanks for being here. Thanks, Liz. Good to see you. All right, Katrina, let's start out with this question of the day today. Obviously, President Trump made a very bold claim yesterday. He said he would have wa uh, won the popular vote, which he lost by several million votes, if it hadn't been for illegal voting. Katrina, my question is, what evidence here? He didn't present any. Sean Spicer, his press secretary, didn't present any. What evidence does he have of voter fraud on this massive of a scale? Well, the evidence is in past elections as well. I mean, as you mentioned uh, just, just a while ago, that there have been reports of thousands of people voting in particular cities. We also know that Obama won his election by 135% in some counties. We know that dead people are voting. We know in some states they don't clear those voter rolls after individuals die who somehow continue to vote. Those things over time is evidence enough to do an investigation because he does owe it to the American people to make sure that the elections are in fact fair moving forward, particularly in the state of California, which you can look no further than the LA Times, which talked about the law that they have, the, the motor voter law, where illegal aliens were giving driver's licenses and were using those to potentially even vote. So we need to look at all of these things because voting in this country is very sacred um, and it is something we have to protect. And I do believe that Donald Trump is the only president that will. Right, but but just to push back on this point just a little bit, I, I I mean I completely agree with you. We've seen evidence of dozens, perhaps even hundreds, of examples of voter fraud. But dozens or hundreds, even thousands. I mean that's not three to five million. That's what President Trump was saying. Millions and millions of illegal votes. Where? How does that even work out? I think if you just look at the state of California alone, um, again, go back to the motor voter law, and they have done numbers and studies on these just in their local papers about the sheer number of illegal aliens that were given driver's licenses and have been voting, and those can get up to the millions, and we're talking about losing the popular vote for a couple of million people who happen to be in the state of California. But these are things that are extremely important, and even if it was just 100,000 or 200,000 people voting illegally in this country, we have to make sure that our voter rolls are being maintained we have to make sure that we have mechanisms in place to prevent illegal aliens from voting in our federal elections and our state elections. Right, because like you said, I, I, I don't disagree with you on that point. I mean, I think even if it's one vote, you, people already have a sense of skepticism that their one vote counts. The integrity of each and every person's vote, that's, that's the bedrock of our democracy here. But I guess the more important question here then is how. You can, you can say big statements, you can state your intention to investigate, state even a position that you oppose voter fraud, but how's he going to investigate this if it is a state-by-state -state thing? Well, like he wants to do is he wants to have a full investigation. And as a, at a federal level, you can definitely look at federal elections and their processes. And you can go back and find out which one of these illegal aliens were given driver's license. You can find out which entities are dead and have them removed from the voter rolls. And then you can hold those states accountable. Preserving the integrity of the elections in this country is extremely important, particularly when uh, just a few million votes can determine an election. And absolutely, the American people, no matter which side you're on, want to make sure that their vote counts and that they're not being cheated at the local level or the federal level. Right, and presumably, I, I suppose he would work with the secretaries of state of the individual states to determine uh, those voter rolls. But Katrina, let me pivot to another topic here. This has to do with a tweet that President Trump sent out this morning. I want to show this on the screen. Uh, he's talking about Chicago, and he says, if Chicago doesn't fix the horrible carnage going on, 228 shootings in 2017 with 42 killings, I will send in the feds. Katrina, clarify for us what this means. I mean, sending in the feds that's not exactly, I mean, is he talking about National Guards? Is he talking about the FBI? The feds is a little bit of a vague uh, reference here. It is a vague reference, but, you know, thank God to the power of candidate Trump's and now President Trump's Twitter feed. Um, this is something that he'll be able to use on both of the fronts on, on fighting back against uh, illegal voters, as well as cities who aren't doing their jobs at protecting Americans. Sending in the feds could be simply being doing an investigation. Uh, there were over 60 people shot and 11 people killed in Chicago over Christmas weekend. And we have to ask ourselves, why is this happening? Is this due to gang activity? Are there criminal gangs in there? Are there uh, criminal gangs from, uh, from criminal international drug cartels? These are the things that are being kept quiet. We know something is intrinsically wrong when you have more people killed in a city than New York and Los Angeles combined. And sending in the feds could simply mean doing an investigation to find out why these things are happening, or more importantly, 
why they're not being stopped. Right, now I, I think the critics issue here is that saying, I'll oh, send in the feds insinuates in a sense that you might federalize police. This has been a, a criticism from conservatives, Trump's own base here. This has been a criticism of conservatives under President Obama when he was using these consent decrees for the different cities in order to give the federal government more power than the states or the communities oh, or the cities. And this, I and clarify this for me, this is not what President Trump is talking about when he's talking about sending in the feds. Sure, of course. This is the conditioning that we've had now. We've had a president that tried to rule as a king. Uh, president Trump has no intention of doing that. He's just trying to get to the bottom of things and solve problems for Americans because he went to these cities, he went to these states, making those promises that he was going to do whatever he could to stop these things from happening. Doing that investigation, of our uncovering corruption would be, would be huge in many of these cases. President Trump wants to make sure that he's utilizing every tool and resource that he has at the federal level to make sure that the people are protected in those states, not necessarily using federal law to go in there and change the state laws, because that's not how it happens. Here's the thing, you have people in Chicago who have no voice, who are being slaughtered. Something is wrong, and President Trump wants to make sure that they have the access to the resources that they need to get to the bottom of it. Right, and I guess we'll have to wait and see exactly how that plays out. Katrina, one more thing before we go here, and I want to ask you, this was drama that happened this morning. It has to do with the EPA. They were told, apparently, to put a pause on their public communication. In layman's terms here, they were told not to tweet, not to release press conferences. Uh, and, and this comes shortly after President Trump froze grants and contracts with the EPA until it's reformed, I suppose. You can clarify this. This, of course, this pause on public communication, though, it's received an onslaught of accusations of censorship what exactly happened? Press Secretary Spicer came out and said they never gave a directive to this agency not to communicate publicly. What exactly did happen? Well, um, like Sean Spicer said, they didn't give a direct order. Um, I'm sure something within the agency is saying the President Trump is changing things, and that's, that's hands down what's obvious here. But there have been a slew of new regulations that President Obama put in place on his way out. Uh, so those folks at the EPA are saying, hey, we, we need to put a pause on this because everything is changing. The last thing they want to do is to put out misinformation. So it's probably just some disgruntled employee that's upset that President Trump is changing things over at the EPA. Okay, Katrina, thank you so much for being here. It's always great to have you on the show. Come back anytime. You're always welcome.